At times you'll find you have a series of images that belong together either because they are very similar or because they are part of a set of images. For example, if you use exposure bracketing, you would end up with several images that are virtually identical except for the exposure. In such cases, it can be helpful to stack the set of images together so they're not taking up as much room or causing as much clutter when you're viewing your images. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the use of stacks. Here you can see I have an image of a monkey. He happens to be sitting in the hills above Kyoto, Japan. And there are actually several images of the same monkey in the same position that are quite similar. If I decide that I'd like to keep all of these images, but I don't necessarily need to see all of them at once, I can merge them into a stack. To do so, I'll simply click on the first image and then hold the shift key and click on the last image in the series on the film strip. If there are images that are not contiguous that I would also like to include in the stack, I can hold the control key on Windows or the command key on Macintosh and click on additional images. Once I've selected the images I'd like to include in the stack, I can simply choose photo, stacking, and then group into stack. I could also right-click on any of the selected images to choose the same option from a pop-up menu or click Ctrl-G on Windows or Command-G on the Macintosh to accomplish the same thing. Regardless of how I issue this command, when I do so, the images that were selected will be grouped into a stack. That means they're all brought together and I only see one thumbnail. But there's an indicator on that thumbnail indicating that this image is part of a stack and showing me how many images are actually in that stack. I can click on this icon to expand the stack so that I can see all of the images contained within that stack. Notice that they're grouped together here. They're no longer separated by other images, but rather in sequence on the film strip. If I click the stack icon once again, the stack will be collapsed so that I only see one thumbnail. Notice that as I mouse over each of these thumbnails, there's an indication that it is part of a stack, as well as which image within the stack it is. I can also change the order of images within the stack. For example, perhaps I like this image with the city of Kyoto in the background a little bit more than the other images. I could then move this up in the stack all the way to the top position so that it will also be the image I see when the stack is collapsed. In this case, I'll use the right click options. So I'll right click on this image, followed by move to top of stack. Note that I could also move it up or down one position within the stack if preferred. In this case, I'll use the top of stack option to place this image at the top of the stack, thereby reordering the other images. And as I mentioned, when I collapse the stack, this image will now be the image that's shown as the image representing that stack. Naturally, besides using the stack icon to expand or contract the stack, I also have menu options available. I can choose these from the photo menu or by right-clicking on the image. In either case, I would then choose stacking and then unstack if I wanted to unstack all of the images. As you can see, the images get unstacked and only the image that was at the top of the stack is now selected. I'm going to undo that step so that I still have my stack in order to explore a couple of the additional options. I'll expand that stack and then I'll choose one of the images that's inside of the stack. If I decided that I no longer want this particular image to be included in the stack, I can simply right click and choose stacking and then remove from stack. The same option once again is available from the photo menu. Once I choose this option, as you can see, the selected image is now outside of the stack, so when I collapse the stack, the image I removed is no longer included. Another option is the ability to split a single stack into two stacks. In this case, I'll expand my stack to take a look at the images that are contained within that stack. You can see as I mouse over each of the images labeled with the number within the stack. In this case, I'll assume that I want to split this into two stacks, one containing the three images of the monkey on the hillside and another containing the three images that include the city in the background. First, I need to sort these images into an appropriate order. So I'll choose the first image and then right click and choose stacking, move down in stack. In this case, I'll need to repeat that command a couple of times to get this image into the correct position. Once I've applied this command three times, the image will be in the correct position so that the hillside monkeys and the city in the background monkeys are separated into two logical groups. Now I can choose the image in the position where I want the split to occur. In other words, the images to the left will be one stack and the images from this point to the right will become the second stack. I'll right click on this image and choose stacking, split stack. At this point, I now have two stacks. 
The stack over here on the right is the three images with the city in the background. So I'll go ahead and collapse those. And the stack over here on the left contains the three images of the monkey on the hillside. I'll go ahead and collapse that stack as well. There are also options to expand or collapse all stacks at once. If I right click anywhere on the film strip and then choose Stacking, Expand All Stacks, all stacks in the current set of images will be expanded. I can also right click and choose Stacking, Collapse All Stacks, and all of the stacks in the current set of images will be collapsed. Again, keep in mind that these options are available both from the right click menu as well as from the photo menu. In fact, there are also keyboard shortcuts that you could use for stacking. Grouping into a stack is Ctrl G on Windows or Command G on the Macintosh. Unstacking the set of images is Ctrl Shift G on Windows or Command Shift G on Macintosh. Expanding the stack can be accomplished simply by pressing the letter S. To move the selected image to the top of the stack, press Shift S. To move the image up one position in the stack, you can press Shift with the left square bracket. And to move the image down by one position in the stack, you can choose Shift and the right square bracket. There's also an option to automatically create stacks from all images in the current collection. I'm going to right click on the film strip and then choose Stacking, Auto Stack by Capture Time. I can then specify how much time I want to occur between stacks. If I reduce the amount of time, in this case going down to just a few seconds, there will be more stacks because fewer images will be in each of those stacks. If I move to the right, I can create fewer stacks by expanding the amount of time in between the images that were captured. In other words, this will create groups of images based on when they were captured. Note, by the way, that depending on the setting you use for the time between stacks, some images might be unstacked because they simply don't fit into a duration with other images. Once you've determined the time between stacks you want to use, you can simply click the Stack button and all of the images will be stacked based on the settings you used. Those stacks are not collapsed by default, so you're still seeing all of the images. But notice as I mouse over the images, you can see an indication of which number each of those images is within the stack. If I right click and then choose Stacking, Collapse All Stacks, then we'll be able to see all of the stacks collapsed into, in this case, only 11 individual stacks. And of course, you can see an indication on each of the images that represent a stack as to how many images are contained within that stack. As you can see, stacking photos can be very helpful in terms of tidying up the film strip or grid displays, enabling you to navigate among your images more quickly. In most cases, I use stacking to group together images that are very similar, but there are a wide variety of situations where you might want to put stacks to use in order to simplify the display of your images and remove some of the clutter they can otherwise create.